Hi everyone. Hi you guys. Okay, it's been a crazy day. I've been staring at my ingredients and then I've just been so preoccupied with a million other things, but we are gonna bang this out. Uh, I'm actually excited because I'm hungry and I cannot wait to have some of this food for lunch. So let's bang it out. Let's get to the beat together. Prepandrally.com is where you can get all these recipes. Um, once you subscribe, you get a weekly email, a weekly menu, grocery list. We do it all for you. We meal prep for the week. Um, it's a family meal prep subscription service. And yeah, you guys, if you want to try it out, you can put in code free month. You get a free month to try it out. We're being super generous. We just want you guys to see the beauty of this system because it saves my butt. It's going to save your life. Trust me. It's going to completely change up your your game and your weeks are going to be so much less stressful. Okay, so let's do this, shall we? All right, um, we're going to get started with the chicken curry. We are doing week 20. I can't believe it's week 20, you guys. Um, we're making an amazing chicken curry uh, falafel dinner one night. We are doing these Asian bowls and uh, pizza night. So you guys can take a look at that on your PDF, prepandrally.com. Again, once you subscribe, you will have access to the meal prep downloads on prepandrally.com. Um, so be sure to head over there, check it out, and follow along with this video, and I guide you through every single step of the way. Um, as you guys know, I keep a garbage can next to my little station. I keep a towel um, just to make it very convenient. The whole thing is time management, getting through this as quickly and easily as possible um, so that you don't waste any time. We're all about just taking care of business and doing it quickly and efficiently. So I also set up little sections throughout my counter so that we can just get from one dish to the next. All right? Highly recommend you do that. So once you've shopped your grocery list, you can just follow along the prep list. Um, and this is considered the prep rally. So we're going to get started. I have a large pot right over here. We're going to get this chicken curry cooking. Um, a lot of people are scared of chicken curries. I know. I was one of them. My mom tends to be afraid of curries. There's just curry powder in it. I'm not using any curry paste, so this isn't the real deal. Um, but it's my version of a chicken curry, and it's so flavorful. Lots of good veggies in there. Kids really like it. You can make it as spicy or as mild as you want. You don't even have to add the curry if you don't want, and just make it like a stew. So it's totally up to you, and as always, make these meal plans right for you and for your family, okay? They're simply a guide. They're by no means strict rules. I don't think a recipe should ever be strict rules. I think it should always just be completely up to you, however you want to make the dish. Make it your own, interpret it any way you want. So I have one onion. We're gonna get sauteing. I just sliced it this way, and then we go in this way. So don't look at my nails, you guys. It's been a while since I got my nails done. Um, if you guys follow me on Instagram, <laughs> um, I'm taking a little nail detox because I've just been doing gel manicures for a while and sometimes your nails just gotta breathe. I'm also excited because I'm starting to take some collagen powders, so be posted for info on that. Um, but that's also supposed to make your hair and your nails really great, your skin. So I'll keep you posted on all that via Instagram at Prep and Rally. So Follow along there if you don't already. I share all kinds of insights, food related, fitness, fashion, kind of everything. Um, so I like to just share all my little secrets with you guys if I come across anything that I truly love or believe in. Okay, so onion is in our pot. We put a little olive oil in there and bump that up to pretty high heat. And whenever I'm sauteing some onions, a little bit of salt in there. And be sure you grab your spatula or a wooden spoon, whichever you prefer, and just give that a mix around. All right, so next to go in there, we're going to get some fresh garlic cloves. If we're using the frozen, um, just pop out like one or two of those little squares. That's totally fine. That works. Otherwise, grab yourself some fresh garlic cloves. It's a nice tight head, which means that's nice and fresh. All right, so we're going to do two cloves right here. Make sure you get rid of all those little papers. Huh, what a day, you guys. I'm actually prepping for this event that I have going on the next two days um, at the Rebecca Minkoff store. It's called the Family, the Family, the Female Founder um, Organization, and it's all about promoting female-founded uh, 
companies. So I'm one of, I think, five or six different companies. We're going to be doing a little pop-up shop in Rebecca Minkoff's store right here in Melrose. Pretty cool. So I'm just kind of prepping for that, getting everything ready. Um, should be a really cool experience. But my head is just in a million different places right now. And they just called from school. Jolie's belly's not hurting. It's like that mom life, okay? So trust me, I'm in it with you guys. That is the reason why I came up with this system because we are busy. So much going on, so much to do. Uh, especially if you're a working mom. I mean, you're juggling everything. And not having to juggle dinner and stress about dinner every night has literally changed my life. Um, and so many others as well, because um, you guys tell me all the time. And I know it works because it works for me. Um, and even if you don't prep every single week or every single night, just having a starting point, knowing where you're going for the week, what you're purchasing, general idea of your menu, even that's helpful. Even making a few things, so at least it relieves you from one or two nights of dinner. So make it your own and do what works for you, okay? Next up, we're going to get our peppers in here. So we have our onion, two cloves of garlic that I just minced. Throw it in there. Let it keep cooking. Uh, my pepper, you guys know how I like to do this. I just kind of cut around, opening it up like a little book and getting rid of all those seeds. So you love when you find like one of those little surprises in a pepper. I don't know why that like makes me really excited. <laughs> Okay, so here we go. So I told you guys you could thinly slice them, you could dice them, you could slice them, you could do whatever you like. I will do a nice thin slice here. And this curry is so good. My sister-in-law Ayala actually made this for us, made something similar for us. When we were living in Florida, she came for the weekend and we were literally sitting on the table just picking at this all night. It was so good. And even the kids loved it and I have to say, that was the first time I gave my kids chopsticks to eat dinner with as like a trick to get them to eat well. And it worked, okay? So they were not excited about a curry. They were like, did not want to try it. They protested. And I was like, you know what? Look what I have, chopsticks. So we made it into this whole fun little activity of trying to eat your curry with rice with chopsticks. And it worked, I'm telling you. Kids are so funny. They don't like things one way, switch it up, serve it to them another way. You just never know. You just never know. All right. So here we go. I forgot to peel my potatoes. I'm going to do so really quick. Take your two potatoes. And again, for all of these recipes and exact measurements, head to prepandrally.com, subscribe, get your free month. Put in free month for the code and try it out if you have not done so already. Um, you will see the difference. And... Use these recipes any way you want, any way you can. I use them for Friday night dinners. I repurpose them for dinner parties, for brunches. You know, put, put them in a little leaflet, like a little booklet. Make yourself a little cookbook out of it because essentially that is what it is and that is what you're paying for, these PDFs, uh, these recipes. So treat it like a cookbook and when you think about what you're actually paying and what you're getting, plus the amount that you're saving by cooking this way, I mean, it's the best thing for your buck, honestly. And you still end up with homemade dinner that you made, you customized for your family. Pretty awesome. All right, so peel your potatoes. Sorry I'm rushing, but that's the beauty about doing this on YouTube because you guys can fast forward um, as much or as little as you want and cut to the parts that you need, okay? So just feel free to pause this if you need it any time. So, peppers are getting in here. At this point, I would normally add my chicken cutlets. I happen to have had this ground chicken in my freezer. So, guess what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna add ground chicken right in here and brown it up a little bit instead of using the chicken cutlets. You could use dark meat chicken. Um, you could use even chicken on the bone if you wanted. And it'll get super soft and kind of like fall off the bone by the end of when it's done cooking. So feel free to play around with the same recipe. Um, use any part, uh, cuts of chicken that you like. You can even do this with ground beef if you want, um, with pieces of beef, like stew meat. So it works so many different ways. You can even do it completely vegetarian. So I always want to give you those tools and that confidence to be able to mix stuff up and make it your own because that's 
enjoying time in the kitchen. It's having the freedom to do that. Otherwise, you're a slave in the kitchen and it's no fun. Nobody likes that. So I'm gonna season it up here again. Seasoning every layer because we just added all that chicken in there. So you wanna get it nice and seasoned. Okay, salt and pepper going on in there. And the reason why we're doing this stew first, you guys know the drill. Um, everything has an order and a reason of why it goes in the order that it goes in because it takes not that long to cook, but it takes a lot of time to cool. And we don't want to be waiting at the end of this whole meal prep an hour for this to cool before you can actually go to sleep or put it in your fridge. So everything is thought out and I want you guys to start thinking in this way. Also, if you're prepping for a dinner party or making a Friday night dinner, Think about your entire menu in advance and say, hmm, what do I need to put in first so that everything is done at the same time? How can I maximize my time in the kitchen so I'm not there all day? Because no one likes that. Okay, so next thing that's gonna go in, here we go. We're gonna put in our coconut milk. So I have light coconut milk. Um, a lot of times I'll use full fat coconut milk, but there's no need here. We don't need just the white tops. We're gonna be using the whole can. Um, so you could definitely use light if you wanted to use the, the full fat one. By all means, go right ahead. You'll just have like a nice, thicker, richer uh, broth. But this works just as well, and it cuts some of those calories. It doesn't have a coconutty flavor. Like, it doesn't taste so strong like coconut. You guys are going to love this. Just trust me on this. It also freezes beautifully. So if for some reason you don't finish it all, you can always store it. Okay? So once you've browned your chicken or your meat your ground beef, whatever you're using. Get your coconut milk in there, okay? We're gonna add our potatoes. So I'm just cutting this into a small dice. So we've peeled our potatoes, okay? And you want it to be pretty small because you want them to cook pretty quickly, okay? Potatoes tend to take a while to cook. So throw your potatoes in. Of course, you can always swap in sweet potatoes or uh, even butternut squash, whatever you like just makes it hearty and kind of like a really complete filling yummy meal. Okay, so just cut your potatoes. All right, beautiful. You guys follow me on Instagram also. It's just asking what everyone's doing this weekend. I'm dying to get away because it's President's weekend. It's our anniversary coming up. We haven't been away in a while. Um, just like really craving a getaway. But well, then again, we were just in Nashville, but we haven't been away as a family really ever, just like on like a little family vacation. We haven't really done anything like that. Um, so it's always hard with the kids, but I feel like they're really getting to a point where they're not as difficult anymore and it could actually be fun. So we're thinking of going to San Diego, we'll see. There's so many places in California that we've never been, so we're kind of excited about exploring our new area. All right, here we go. Get your vegetable or chicken stock in there. Okay, you can measure it if you like. I never do, but you can. I'm the worst measurer. Worst, okay. So your two heads of cauliflower, my Whole Foods did not have, so I'm just putting in some frozen cauliflower, okay? Um, it's also just way easier. I may not need both of these. I'm not sure what the equivalent of like two heads is, but honestly, you can't go wrong. Um, it's not going to ruin the recipe if you do a little bit extra or a little bit less. So it's just up to you. We love cauliflower in this house. Like love, love, love. I'm just going to do all of it. Because I don't want like a little bit left over. Perfect. Okay. Oh, this be so good. And if there's left over, again, you can always freeze. Okay. And this really cooks up pretty quickly. Um, last thing we're going to do, let's see. Let me just make sure I'm not steering you wrong here. Uh, ba, 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 um, are there any ingredients? Okay, that's it. We're going to add everything else and then we're going to cook for like 25 minutes. So here we go. A little bit of corn I'm going to add in here. And the corn, of course, you could omit if you don't like it, but it adds really great flavor in here. I love corn. Kids love corn. Corn is delish. Add in your corn and now we're just going to get our spices in here. I added a ton of cauliflower. I'm going to add a little bit extra broth. You don't need to. Totally your call. And here we go. So more salt as needed. I'm going to season with salt and pepper at the end um, once I taste it. But we're going to add the coriander, turmeric, and 
garlic powder. So there's our turmeric, which stains like a mofo. So just be careful with that. Uh, it was actually annoying because I got my nails done a couple weeks ago and I touched turmeric because I was marinating something and it just stained my like light pink nail polish. Yellow. So be wary of that. Okay. Um, and some garlic powder here, even though we added garlic, garlic powder, I think just adds even more flavor. And we, let's see, is that it? I think that's it. Oh, and one bay leaf. You don't want to forget to take this out at the end, so try to remember to remove your bay leaf. It just adds some really good flavor to your stew, but it is by no means necessary, okay? So give that a mix around just so you can sort of distribute the vegetables and all of those ingredients and the spices. Oh my God, already is smelling superb. Smells so good, okay. As much as I love soups and stews, I am getting excited for springtime. So soon we are going to be getting into lighter foods such as salad bowls and lettuce wraps and tacos and all kinds of summery things. So pretty excited. Chicken salads. All right, so bring that to a boil. I'm keeping it like partially covered for a second while it comes to a boil. And then I will lower to the simmer and just simmer it for like 25 minutes or so. Okay, so keep my garlic powder out. The rest I'm putting away, clear some space. All right, moving right along. Get rid of these things if you don't need them. Next thing we're gonna do is get our rice cooking, okay? So I have this pot over here. Boop. Pot with my water. Okay, I'm turning my flame on. I measured out my rice. Okay, give it a little mixy poo. And bring that up to a boil. Once it's boiling, lower to a simmer, you know the drill. Rice is going, easy. Okay, while that's coming to a boil, I have my oven preheated to 425, so be sure to do that. Okay, and here we go. So we're gonna be throwing these vegetables into our oven. So turn your oven on, 425, um, and we're gonna start roasting. So I have broccoli, I have portobello mushrooms, and I have uh, green peppers. So use what you guys like. If you don't like green peppers, if you don't like portobello mushrooms, use whatever you're into, okay? It's totally your call, there are no rules here. Just make sure either watch this, I always say it's good to watch the video before you actually cook so you know what you're getting yourself into. Um, or just read through the entire PDF so that you really get a sense of what is included in the grocery list, what's on the menu, and then think about what you and your family would eat and adjust from there to make it work for you. Because at the end of the day, you don't want to get to dinner and have the whole family be like, oh, you know I didn't like this. So adjust it as necessary, okay? Like today in our uh, falafel, Mike hates cilantro. He hates all herbs, but especially cilantro. So I'm omitting it and I'm just doubling up on my parsley. Okay. So to roast these veggies, I have one large extra sheet pan, which I love. It's linked on my website, prepandrally.com. You could purchase it there. It is my favorite. Um, but if you don't have an extra large sheet pan, you could use two sheet pans, um, or baking dishes, whatever you need to roast your veggies, but I think every meal prep should have a big old batch of roasted veg for the week. It's just the best way to go. Because it's good for lunches, it's good for dinners. I love a roasted vegetable. So I'm just cutting this into, I'd say florets, but I'm using a little bit extra, um, little bits from the stems, just because I happen to love the stems and I think it's wasteful getting rid of it. Um, I do have a recipe from one of the past meal preps that uses uh, broccoli stems in a pesto, which is an amazing flavor booster, super healthy, great way to get vegetables into your pesto and even to make it healthier and less fattening. Um, so it's a great thing to do with your leftover stems. You could also use your stems for broccoli rice, kind of like a cauliflower rice, but a broccoli rice. So never throw out those bottoms. Either roast them, make a pesto out of them, or turn them into cauliflower rice, or even like a, um, sorry, broccoli rice, or even a broccoli 
coleslaw, right? That's exactly what it is. They take the stems, they just like peel off the fibrous parts, and that's it. So I have my broccoli florets here. Um, I have portobello mushrooms, which are so good, so hearty, so delicious. If you want to lighten up the pizzas at the end of the week, buy some additional portobello mushrooms. You could even roast them now. And then at the end of the week, just make your pizzas in here and you have a very beautiful, light, easy uh, pizza, okay? So I'm just slicing them. Obviously, if you're gonna make portobello pizzas at the end of the week, like actually bake the cheese and sauce and everything in the mushroom, don't slice all them, leave some whole, okay? And then we have our green peppers which I'm cutting the same way as we did the red, just around, around, around. And I'm just gonna cut them into slices. All right. Now these veggies, you could use them any way you like, um, but the, what, what I did um, for the meal prep is incorporated them into that Asian bowl, that kind of like that stir fry bowl um, for Wednesday night's dinner. And they also make their way into the pizza. So use a Paro baking sheet, if that applies to you. Okay, cool. Keep going around. Seriously, I just love what you find in here. They're so funny. <laughs> find the funkiest little things inside peppers. Okay. Mm. I never used to like peppers. It's a new thing. There we go. Okay. Try to get them as single layer as possible. Things will shrink down. So don't worry if they're overlapping a little, but as single layer as you can. And just give it a nice little drizzle of olive oil, some salt. Okay. And just give a little toss around. Give your hands a rinse. Throw these in the oven for like 30 minutes. What did I tell you guys? Yep, 30 minutes. And these are gonna roast. Easy. Meanwhile, we have our stew that's coming up to a boil. We have our rice that's coming up to a boil. So that's three things already, and it's been 22 minutes. This is how we rally. Right? Oh. <laughs> okay. I'm in such a rush today. But it just shows you you don't need to spend all day in the kitchen to have dinners on the table every night of the week. Oven. Here we go. Look at this beautiful baking sheet of oh, veggies. Yum. So big. Okay, in the oven, 30 minutes, here we go. In, 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 beautiful. Next up, hold on. Where are my paper towels? Okay, that's cool. Use this, and just give your board a little wipe down if you have like any pepper seeds or garlic little papers, and shake it on off into your garbage can. Okay, lovely. So. Look at your stew, or not stew, your curry, whatever you want to call it. Oh my God, does it smell good. Mm. And you don't want to overcook this too much. You really just want to cook it until the potatoes are softened and everything is really like combined together. Um, unless you specifically want kind of like a mushier, softer stew. I tend to like a little bit of texture in mine, so don't overcook it too much, okay? Uh, rice is still coming up to boil, so let that do its thing. For the rice, if you wanted, you could give it an extra little boost of flavor by just seasoning it with a little bit of salt, and then you're good. Okay, roasted veggies are in. Next up, we're going to roast some tofu, which we're gonna be using in those Asian uh, stir-fry bowls. My kids love these straight up, so if you don't wanna make those stir-fry bowls, just serve your kids some tofu. You could just eat straight up tofu. They're obsessed. It's just like a plain flavor kind of like a pasta in a way they just love it so here's what i do with my tofu i have three things of tofu they come in the container in the water take them out of the water drain off the water um, and then i just put it on a, a towel to try to absorb as much moisture as possible and i just cut this in half lengthwise so cut right there okay so that you're exposing the center part and then again just wipe it off you want this to be as dry as possible and all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna layer it back together once you've cut it. And just like a grid, make like one, two, three cuts that way, and then turn it and go one, two, three, and like four cuts the other way. So that you end up with these really, really cute little cubes. Kids are obsessed. I used to make this for my clients all the time. 
which is where this idea came from from my own kids, um, and they're obsessed. Like it's actually hilarious. Whenever I tell them I made tofu, they flip out as though I'm saying they want they're gonna have candy tonight. So try it. If you're nervous, you're like, what kid eats tofu? That's bizarre. Trust me when I say if you just roast it with just some salt and a little bit of olive oil, you could even pan fry it. Um, it all tastes very similar though, so it doesn't really matter. The pan frying just makes things messier and takes more hands on time. This way you get to just throw it in that same oven as your vegetables and they roast all together, okay? So, and for those stir fry bowls, you could make stir fry bowls. You could also, I kind of, I wrote an instructions some different ways that you could serve it, but make like a fried rice type of thing if you want. Put it all in a frying pan and just fry it all together. You can even whisk some eggs in there to make it like fried rice. Lots of different things you could do with it. Rice coming up to boil, lower to a simmer and cover it with a tight fitting lid. And that's important. If you have a pot that has like one of those little holes for the steam to come out, I don't really know what the purpose of those are because um, I have some pots like that. I just don't understand why you would ever want the steam to escape. I guess you're trying to reduce something. Um, but when you're making rice or quinoa, that will just completely mess up your recipe. You want to trap that steam in there. That's going to help cook your food. Okay. So if you do have a little hole in the top of your pot, um, what I've done in the past is taken some tin foil. It's a kind of ghetto, but just stuff some tin foil into that hole to keep the steam from escaping, okay? So just kind of try to remember that next time you are trying to cook rice. If it's not working for you, see if you have one of those little holes in the top of your pan, because that'll mess you up. Okay, so I've just coated this olive oil and salt. That's it. That is it. And just like our veggies, we're gonna pop them in that same oven for Let's see. I said 40 minutes there. It may not take 40 minutes. So totally your call. Um, but usually it's between 30 to 40 minutes in the oven at that temperature for everything to get really crispy and golden. Okay. So you want these to have a nice crispy bite to them. They're so good that way. Kids love crunch. Okay. So keep that in mind. Next thing we're going to do is make our Falafel batter, okay? So we're not actually frying the falafels tonight or baking the falafels tonight. We are going to be doing that the night of. But we're just prepping the batter so that all you have to do the night of is put them on a baking sheet or in a frying pan and cook them off and you're gonna have the crispiest, most perfect, yummy falafel fresh that night with zero effort and zero prep time, okay? So here we go. I have my chickpeas in a food processor. I actually use half chickpeas, half cannellini beans. Feel free to do that as well. My store was out of two containers of chickpeas. So I got one chickpea and one cannellini bean. Smells so good. Um, make sure you lower this curry down to a simmer so you're not boiling away, okay? Once it's boiling, lower to a simmer for like 25 minutes. Um, okay. Whew. Um, so I have half cannellini beans and half chickpeas, or you could do all chickpeas, totally your call. You could do this with any bean, it's totally up to you. Um, then, the best part about a food processor, I have one linked on my website as well in the shop section. Um, they don't cost a lot of money and you could just do so much with it. I make my almond biscotti in there. You could do sweet things, you could do savory things. It saves you so much time because you don't have to really do any chopping or dicing. I'm literally cutting my onion giving the food processor a little help by just chopping it up a little, but otherwise you throw it right in there. Okay. So I have my half of an onion right there. We're going to just take three cloves of garlic. You guys see what I'm doing? It's a really tight head of garlic. It's good stuff. Okay. And get your garlic in there. I like using fresh garlic in falafel. And I also wrote some notes on the PDF as well, things that you could do. Uh, with these falafel, again, you could fry them, you could bake them, you can make them into balls, you can make them into burger shapes. Um, you can even make them into fun little cookie cutter shapes. So if your kids like hearts or whatever it may be, um, you could form them into any shape or even let your kids get involved and do some of the work as well. Uh, make it fun for them. All right, so 
Hold on. I need more olive oil. Pause. So about two tablespoons of oil. Okay. My goodness. Who runs out of oil? I don't know. Crazy. We'll do a little bit of spray if you need. Perfect. Olive oil goes in there. Next up, we have our cilantro and parsley. I'm just going to use some parsley. And you know what else I'm going to do? I forgot I have some dill as well. So get your parsley in there. Mike happens to love dill, and I happen to have some. So I'm going to add some dill, just because why not? An herb is an herb is an herb. Can't be bad, right? So use what you got. And here we go. Uh, salt, okay. It's a good idea to measure here just because you're likely not going to taste this before you cook them. So it's good to have exact measurements, but I'm still not. Sorry. <laughs> I have problems. Okay, garlic powder. I'm gonna season this up really, really nicely. We have some cumin. You know what's easier is opening that little flap. And the cumin gives it that signature falafel flavor. Um, onion powder, I'm gonna be using a little bit of onion consomme because apparently I'm out of onion powder. What I hope you guys notice though is that I literally use what I have. Mess around in your kitchen, figure out what else you could use as a substitute. I never want you going to 15 different grocery stores to source all of your ingredients for these meal preps. That defeats the whole purpose. This is supposed to be easy. Um, so if you ever have a question of what you can use in place of something, you can always reach out to me, Instagram, um, or via email, okay? Don't be afraid to reach out. Three tablespoons of flour. I'm using wheat bran. Okay, just because it's super healthy, it gets tons of fibers in there for the kiddos. Tons of fiber, and why not? It helps bind it. So use whatever you like for that. And then baking powder. If you guys follow me on Instagram, saw the baking powder soda situation. Essentially, I was <laughs> making a cake, and Andy used my container to make her slime a couple weeks ago. Took off my little stickers, which I've re put on now, so I know what's what. But I didn't know what was what, and I took a guess. And I ended up using baking soda in my cake, messed up the whole thing, and it was an annoying cake to make too, and it was late at night, and I was baking, and I hate baking. Basically, don't mix up your baking soda or powder because it will mess up your cake. It's all science, and it's annoying, so don't do it. But if you ever are confused what's what, I've learned from YouTube. You just mix a little bit of each into water. The one that fizzes up and creates bubbles in the water is the baking powder. Baking soda will not do that. I know. Okay, so good. So, so, so good. Um, okay, here we go. I'm so excited. Falafel's so good. I find it super annoying taking out a food processor, but when you're already cooking on Sunday, you're in it. You're in your prep rally, so just do it. Store it in your little bowl, okay? And then that night, you literally take this and you just form them. You could just little plop them onto little... Um, Baking sheet, once it sets up in the fridge a little bit, it hardens a little, so it'll be easier to work with once it's chilled, promise. Um, you could probably roll them into little balls. So it's completely up to you how you like to do this. Serve it any way you like. Serve it in a salad, serve it in a bun, serve it in a lava, serve it as like a burger in a burger bun. Get creative with it. And do what you like. Oh my God, that smells heaven. Mm. That smells really good. Okay, do a little taste, make sure. Oh my God. Mm. Mm. I use smoked paprika also, it's my favorite. Wow. 
So good. Okay. So good. Okay, that's done. So seal this up. May look like nothing, but they end up being beautiful falafel. Okay, rice is almost done. Give it a couple more minutes. Um, if you're using a brown rice, it takes longer. I'm actually using a white rice. Um, so just adjust according to which kind of rice you're using. If it's long grain, short grain. Um, so this needs a tiny bit longer, but basically done. I'm lowering my curry a tiny bit. It's bubbling kind of fiercely. So I'm lowering a tiny bit. Um, okay, vegetables are in there and so is lick tofu. Okay, all we have left to do is a chopped salad and our tahina sauce, okay? Crazy, right? Let's see, where are we up to time-wise? We're up to 35 minutes. Nuts, okay? Told you this system works, you guys. It works. All right, here we go. I have some. I have my bowl here, um, and I also have a lid that goes over this, so it stores really beautifully, and it also serves beautifully. So storage containers are key. I have a bunch on my shop as well, prepperdolly.com. You can check those out, but these Pyrex ones are the best. I heat in them, serve, store, I do everything. So this is essentially like my version of like an Israeli kind of salad, but make it anything you want it to be. You could also make this fresh that night. I just find when I start with a fresh, amazing salad at the start of the week, I nibble on it all week long. So I like making it really big. Adjust this if you think it's way too much for you and your family. Um, but we all love a chopped salad over here. Mike and the kids don't like stuff, they call it. Um, are they only like stuff? Sorry. Meaning no lettuce. Even though the kids do like lettuce, I lie. Mike is the only one that prefers just stuff. Uh, but the kids do like the cucumbers and the tomatoes, more of like the chunky part of a salad, even though I hate that word. Did I just say chunky? Yeah, I hate that word. Um, but they're really into this kind of salad. So simple, yummy, fresh, and you have it in your fridge for the week, okay? Scallions, let's just do those now. Why not? Cutting off the bottoms, cutting off those tops. And you guys know I talk about knife skills all the time. Once you get a knife and you have a sharp knife, it's really fun to chop and dice. You just need to know what you're doing and have those knife skills. Look at that. Minutes you have a salad and it's just so enjoyable to put it together because you're not sitting there sawing all day long. Okay? I have some radishes here. You could completely omit the radishes. My girls actually don't like radishes, so I'm gonna leave my pieces kind of large. Um, so it's more for mommy. If it's too small, it's hard to pick out. So, but even like with a salad, sometimes with like onion, I'll leave the onions off to the side for myself so I can just add on, on my own salad. And that way I don't ruin the salad for everybody else. So totally up to you, make this your own. You could also omit the radishes altogether especially if you can't get any good ones right now where you're living because they're very summery, warm weather kind of veggies. They're also very spicy, peppery, depending on how fresh they are. Yeah, these aren't so spicy, but not the season, so can't expect it. All right, and then I have some cherry tomatoes. I'm shutting off my rice because all the water is absorbed and I'm leaving it covered for like 10 minutes off of the heat, okay? And that will give it some final like 10 minutes to just finish steaming. Take all of your tomatoes and give them a little chop down the center. And then all we have left is that tahina sauce, okay? It's crazy. It's so fast. And about five minutes or so, I'm gonna shut off this curry, okay? and let it start cooling. I always advise uh, moving things into storage containers as soon as they are done so that A, they don't continue cooking, getting mushy and losing all the texture, um, but B, letting them start to cool because otherwise it's staying in the hot pan, you're not giving it a chance to cool off. So put it in a nice cool pan. If you need to cool things even faster, you can always use some ice, make a little ice bath and set the bowl in there so it starts to cool even faster, okay? Never put anything hot in your fridge because you will decrease the temperature in your fridge. 
and you could break your fridge that way. Plus, you could also spoil things in your fridge, like dairy products and stuff, um, by lowering that temperature. So don't go there, okay? Um, that was it. That was like a five-second salad. Check it out. Beautiful, right? So pretty. Lastly, we have our Trina sauce. So, oh my God, it smells so good. We're going to do one little test because... I don't believe in any perfect timing for food. It depends on the size of things. Yeah, that's totally soft. Ha, ha. Mmm. Ah. Ah. That was so hot, that potato. Wow. Ah. Really hot. Okay. Take it off the heat. Take the top off so it starts to cool. And I'm going to make my sauce, and then I'm going to switch this into a large bowl. Take out your bay leaf. I see it right here. And hold on. So be sure to take that out. Um, and then, yeah, take it off the heat, put it in your storage container, let it start cooling right away. And your curry is done. Season it with some extra salt and pepper as needed. Okay, be sure to do that. Lastly, we're going to make this sauce. Where did I put that? Oh, here we go. Okay. I have my little storage container. These, you guys know I love them. I have them in the shop section of my site as well. And we're just going to make a really, really simple, easy, easy sauce here, which you could adjust any way you like as well. Um, this trina paste, I don't love. I think maybe it wasn't mixed originally when I used the top part of it. So now it's just like very thick on the bottom. Um, but I'm going to try to like whisk it up and see what happens. Trina is weird, man. It like thickens up after time and then it's too loose and it's bizarre. But then again, it's forgiving because you can always add more trina to thicken things or water to thin it or more either soy sauce or lemon if it needs more flavor. Okay. So soy sauce going in. All the exact measurements are on prepandrelli.com. I'm just going to finish this up. Lovely. Soy sauce. And we have the juice of the lemon. Big lemon. I thought this would be really juicy. Yes. That's also another thing. Like juice of one lemon is like, okay, but is it a juicy lemon? Is it a not juicy lemon? So it's better to give exact measurements, like two tablespoons of lemon juice. But like, are you really sitting there with your measuring spoon measuring two tablespoons of lemon? I don't know. I feel like just squeeze it. And if you need more lemon, if it feels like you need more lemon juice, you gotta taste all about tasting, um, which is what I wrote in this week's email because if you don't taste, you're never gonna know how something is. And I can't say when I get to a meal and someone's like, oh, I hope it's good, I don't know if it's good. I'm like, I hope you try it. You would know, <laughs> you gotta try it. Otherwise, you're not gonna have any clue if it's yummy or not. So try it and that way you're confident with what you're serving. You know that it's good, you know people are gonna like it. And if it's not good, you can adjust it. And if you don't know how to adjust it, you can always do some research online, message me, send a little message out in the private Facebook group. Super helpful there. Um, so we are always here for each other. This is an amazing community of people. So just know that you have a little squad here rallying with you through the week, okay? So give it a little mix around. Salt, pepper, if you need additional water, to um, thin this out, okay? Just adjust as necessary. If you need more trina, everyone's trina is different. You saw how thick mine is, so like I was scared to add too much, but maybe I do need some more. You can always adjust. Just taste it and make sure you like it, okay? So just give it a good mix around. If I had a little orange thing around here, which makes it leak proof, I could just shake it, which I do often because you save a lot of time, plus you save washing another utensil, okay? But the trina needs to really be whisked in here well. So it's the kind of thing where it's like oil and water, so it's all separated, but you gotta really mix it together. I'm gonna shake it in a minute, but you could dip a little vegetable in. Mmm. Kind of like Israel gone Asian. Love it. Mm. That's awesome. Okay. Seal that up. That you're going to be using on the stir fry bowls. You could use it on salads. This salad I recommend serving with the falafel night. Straight up lemon. You could do lemon, olive oil, salt, pepper. Just like really simple. Serve it all at the table. Um, 
And there you have it, you guys. We have our chicken curry. We have our rice, which I'm uncovering now. I'm gonna fluff it with a fork. Looks perfect. Um, here, I'll show you one sec. It's really steamy, but you see, I made white rice because that's just what I had in my pantry. We have our falafel batter. We have our roasted vegetables coming out of the oven in two minutes. And our tofu. Let's take a little look. We just flew through that, okay? So pause if you need, if you're taking more time with your vegetables, just pause, take your time, drink some water. Um, not water, drink wine. Drink wine, <laughs> drink your wine. Um, and make us fun and call your friends and family to help you prep because that's way we're doing it together. Um, and again, reach out to me at any time for any questions, um, swaps, substitutions, whatever you need. Uh, just reach out. All right. So I hope you have an amazing week. Hope you love this menu. Send me your pictures. I can't wait to see. Give me a shout out on Instagram and I will repost. All right. Love you guys. That was week 20. Go get it done. Bye guys.